Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Figma's new AI release. And we're going to talk a little bit about Claude's new artifact thing. And who really hit the mark for thinking about this new kind of design AI assistant. Like a lot of what we're going to talk about today is like Figma and really the announcements that Figma made. But Claude Artifacts is coming in to steal the show in a way. So first off, Figma had a big conference in San Francisco over the last week. It was Config 2024. Um, they announced a bunch of cool stuff, but they announced also a set of great AI features. For instance, if you're a designer and you're working in layers, being able to have those layers like named for you automatically is great. There's the ability for it to help you perform searches to find kind of similar designs. Uh, there's ability for it to actually generate layouts or kind of a first draft of a design that you might have in mind. You can kind of get it to iterate and, and kind of make changes as you'd like. And it can even kind of go through building out, laying out prototypes um, and that sort of thing. So a lot of really cool, great features announced. There's a bunch of new other things in here as well as new Figma designs and other stuff as well. But that's kind of the, the biggest thing coming from 2024. And I also mentioned Claude. Claude announced uh, this new capability. Uh, they, they announced their 3.5 Sonnet model. But in that model, they also released a brand new UI uh, that you can play around with, uh, actually absolutely free. So, so you can turn it on in their new Claude interface here. And once you've turned it on, you can kind of ask it a question. Uh, for instance, generating like an SVG of a crab. It'll do the work to actually generate that crab. But you can see like you're, you're kind of asking it for something and it's not only generating like the code for that thing, but also sort of rendering it and giving you a preview of what that thing that you've generated looks like, right? So you get this immediate feedback on what was generated. And then they kind of ask it, hey, like, can we actually just turn this into a side scrolling game? Um, so it generates a bunch of game code. Um, and the result you can kind of see here is an actual playable game running in the UI for Claude which is really incredible. This immediate feedback capability is wild, especially for someone who's a non-programmer uh, to be able to play with this sort of thing. So Figma released a lot of really great tooling for designers and Claude's coming from a completely different angle, the kind of non-specialist angle. And so because Claude's coming from this angle, it kind of makes this question like, okay, wait, what do we think about Figma's announcements now in this kind of new landscape? So I want to kind of compare these two. First, Let's talk about Figma and how they operate related to enterprises. Everyone's kind of familiar with like the waterfall model of, of kind of development. This is how like we think about building projects in general. You kind of create a design, work through making it real, coding it into something testable. You test that software, make sure it doesn't have any bugs or problems, uh, and then you end up doing a release. So this is kind of that flow of, of changes. And really like where Figma's coming in here is they're empowering this designer to be able to kind of work at the front of this space. They've already created a really great design tool. It's got amazing capability to work with developers uh, to be able to collaborate on designs and kind of think through how designs should be implemented. Developers have their own kind of great tool set as well to be able to interface with designs. Figma also has the ability to sort of AI generate code the ability for it to give code to the development team as a place to start for building some stuff. Figma also gives you this ability to sort of prototype. You had this design that you kind of worked through and built and, and explored out. And that prototype was then something that you could kind of show off as like, this will be similar to what the working product is at the end of the day. And really like the designer never kind of got things to release. <laughs> That's kind of one, one challenge uh, a bit out of this is like, they kind of rely on a lot of other teams to get something through to the end. There's some cool other capabilities like design systems that kind of help designers bridge that gap a bit further. But this is sort of like the, the traditional model and really what Figma helps with in, in my mental model. Now, the, the challenge is in order for corporate designers or designers in a large kind of corporate space with a lot of teams and working together on kind of big projects where stability matters more than innovation, you need to generate precisely with AI, which is what AI isn't the best at. AI is kind of a shotgun creative approach to solving a problem. When you try to solve a problem in an exact way or you need to solve it in an exact way, uh, it gets tricky. It's hard to inform it of what that way is without a lot of like prompt engineering or without a lot of like effort put in. So when I think about like corporate designers trying to use these tools, 
they're gonna have a really hard time generating designs or riffing on designs with these AI because those designs have to follow the corporate standard or the corporate standard guide. They have to follow their variables, their design tokens, right? And so how well that AI is able to do that is a kind of questionable. Similarly, the, the code that it generates, the code that it generates is great. And if there's nothing available for you to code with and you just need a place to start, that's a great place to start. But a lot of dev teams have a lot of different kind of standards in place for how they build code, how they create things. And a lot of this AI generated code is in, in these environments going to be really just kind of thrown away because they need it to be done a certain way for stability and for standards. Similarly, when you think about actually testing, and this is kind of in any environment, there's a really big disconnect between what is in Figma and what's in a release. And I think that this is largely because of this idea of like a silo. And, and like Figma talks about the silo. Everyone talks about this idea of the silo, uh, this wall that two teams throw things across to. Designers will create a design. They'll throw it over the wall to development. And development kind of has to take what they were given and kind of try and build it out. When they kind of try and go back and ask questions or have things change, they're kind of slapped on the wrist because we need to get stuff done. We need to not like rethink or re-question. And, and, and when I think about like the impact that AI has on that wall, it's sort of like, well, I mean, we can kind of see through it a bit better, right? We can kind of better align it to what that reality might look like. We're not really working together. <laughs> We're not collaborating in some way. And, and like, maybe this is okay, right? There are some environments where the, this is fine. If you have a less interactive product where the user's not doing as many things on the screen and you just need to display things a certain way, less interaction, uh, the, the wall is smaller. There's not as much that could go wrong or many things that would change. The more interactivity that there is, the more APIs that are involved, the more technical work needs to be done to be able to create this solution, the bigger this wall gets, the more challenging it is to accomplish. And the, the further design gets from thinking about what the technical constraints are. So all that to be said, I don't think AI is really helping this make this wall disappear. You can kind of see it, but you still have to throw things over the wall. AI is going to like enhance interactivity, right? If, if you think about like AI applications, now you're at a point where we don't know what the application might produce, right? Rather than having a application that does like one thing a specific way, it's really understandable how this application is supposed to perform. AI allows the application to get closer to what the user is expecting. And that has like this magical property where it feels like the computer is like listening to you. That's incredible. Uh, but that requires that these sort of designers who are thinking about interfaces get closer to testing, get closer to the interactivity. Um, and I, I think a lot about this with like game design. When when game designers are kind of building out a level, they aren't doing like, they are doing some concept art. They are doing like these sort of like visual views of like what these levels could look like and how they might like feel to look at. But when you're thinking about a game, you're thinking about how you move around that space. Is that space fun to move around? What does it look like when you're in that space? Do you feel like cramped? Do you feel like you're in a kind of large vista? That emotional feel for the user is something that they actually want to think about. It's part of the design. Um, and so you can't just get that from the concept art. You have to get that from going through the level, blocking it out, thinking about how the user moves through that level. Uh, and I think like we really are seeing that very similarly with how AI is going to change how interactive applications are. How is the user going to move through your application now that we've got this AI component? And this is going to change and probably add a role to the team of these designers that are now focused more on interactivity. So it's going to create a new role. And I'm not very confident that like Figma helps with this. <laughs> so like we've got these two tools, right? We've got Figma on one side. They help you design out features faster. And then we've got Claude Artifacts, which is a new thing that just came out this week. And it's helping you prototype features faster. Now, like which one of those, just, just based on this, like which one of those sounds more like you're like blocking out a game level? In my mind, it's really this like Claude Artifacts one. That's the one that it feels like I'm getting to see what it might feel like for somebody to go through this. And like, that's really an incredible possibility, right? You're, you're kind of enabling this truly cross-functional view of things, right? If you can do these prototypes on the fly 
where you can have somebody playing this like experience, right? You've, you've, you've developed this prototype of some code, some UI element, and you have it, and you can kind of like continue to prompt and tune and adjust it without really having to be a specialist going on the ground coding. You're able to really touch on all these points. You're able to touch on testing the interactivity. How does it feel? What does it feel like to play with it? You're able to touch on the design elements of like, what does it look like? Can we tweak it this way? Can we tweak it that way? And you're able to touch on the code. How does it act? When I click on things, what does it do? Those sort of three layers are all at play in one like local environment, which is amazing. <laughs> We're empowering like the team to get involved here. And then like, I mean, that doesn't mean that you're done here in my mind. In, in my mind, there's still the specialists that need to come in and enhance that feature or, or enhance that first mock. Right? We're not going to ship this block out to customers, but this block out is insanely helpful for us to be able to understand what does this feature do, right? What is this thing capable of? And then finally, once we're kind of done with all that, we can kind of test it as we go and figure out when it's ready for release. But we have this initial vision of what it looks like. It's very uncommon for teams to work this way. Uh, and so that's really an incredible possibility of what, what could happen. So when I think about Figma and like where they're going, they are trying to meet customers where they're at, right? They're trying to solve the current problems that their customers have. Their customers are larger enterprise teams. They're willing to pay for Figma, which is now getting kind of expensive. And they're able to try to work within those constraints. These AI tools are really best used by startups. They're best used by the oncoming group of people that are coming into the space. And if I think about these sort of mock-ups, right, these, these blockouts, and I start here and I start in this space, I'm not sure what Figma provides. If I'm already able to build out this like prototype, right? Am I just going to have to go back into Figma to then align it with the rest of the design? Because that feels like tedious work that I want to give to an AI. <laughs> Why would I want to bring it back into Figma? <laughs> it almost feels like I have to go back up the waterfall even a little bit. Like if I'm bringing it back into Figma, I have to like bring it like all the way back up to the design layer and then kind of like tell the coders how to code it and then go back to testing it, right? And it like, it delays how quickly we can test something. But like if we're here, and we're looking at the prototype and the design work is to look at the prototype and create differences for that prototype. Here's like the changes that we should make to make this feel better like the rest of our experience. Here are some changes that we should make to improve what this prototype was able to do. I, I don't know if Figma is really the right place for that. It kind of feels like there's an opportunity here for a new tool to come in and play in this space in a different way. So I'm excited to see what people think about this because I'm not convinced that Figma came out really strong here. I think that there's kind of a leaky end to this whole experience and Claude really exposed what that looks like. Thanks for, so much for tuning in again. Um, sorry, it's been a little while. If you haven't heard of us before, we're Stable Discussion. And we write a lot about AI and think about how to kind of observe AI above the hype, think about how it actually works on teams and how people can actually leverage it in their day to day, not just kind of thinking about what's possible in a way, trying to kind of hone it down on, on what's real. So thanks so much. We'd love it if you'd subscribe, give us a like, and thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.